Welcome back to BBTV viewers, I'm Chris Nichols. And I am Jordan Drake. Between the two of us, we have over 25 years of experience reviewing camera gear and vastly more experience when it comes to our own private work in the fields of videography and photography. And therefore, that makes us not only internet sensations, but highly regarded, nay, I would actually say the most highly regarded experts in our field. Yeah, I don't think that's even debatable. And because we're such experts, that's why we feel like we can objectively come up with the answer for what is the best focal length. Yes, absolutely. I'll let, let me make this clear. This is not an opinion that no. we're putting out here. This is objective fact that should apply to you. Every single creator, this is the be all and end all answer to this debate. Not even photographers and videographers. This applies to painters as well when they're trying to figure out the correct perspective. Sir. Now, although it's true that most other folk links do have their time and place where they can be best utilized, there is definitively only one folk link that is considered the greatest of all time, spanning all genres. If binoculars were made in an equivalent folk link, they'd be the best binoculars. If rifle scopes, the best rifle scopes. Kaleidoscopes, the best kaleidoscope. You get it. So, the greatest focal length is an 85 millimeter focal length in full frame terms. Is there one thing that makes the 85 millimeter focal length the greatest focal length definitively of all time bar none? No, there are so many factors that add up to make this the greatest focal length. I mean, first off, it is a simple optical formula to make. They are stunningly crisp, very sharp lenses. You have something that can be made with incredibly wide, bright apertures for maximum light gathering capability. If you want shallow depth of field, they can deliver it. If you want something more compact, you can make compact formulas that still allow plenty of light in. For portraits, their classical forte, they excel over any other lens. It's flattering to the face, minimal distortion, and yet it's the right focal length to be able to do group shots of families, couples together, head and shoulder portraits, it can do them all. Street photography, fantastic, not only for their light gathering capability, but the ability to capture the story, but still maintain a comfortable distance from your subjects when needed. Landscapes by very skilled photographers, myself included, you can utilize an 85 millimeter beautifully for stunning landscapes. If I only had to pick one, I could make this lens work for so many different kinds of photography. What in God's name are you talking about? 85 millimeters is such a restrictive focal. Restrictive, I don't know. I, the versatile is the word you're looking for. I just explained how versatile it was. Like, no, like, second, gonna, are you going to use that lens indoors? Like only if you live in a mansion or a warehouse well, or something like that. Of course you use it indoors. It gives you the light gathering capability. I mean, you belong in a warehouse I have, collecting dust. I have traveled so many times with a single lens and it would never cross my mind to leave with just an 85 millimeter lens. Right, which is a deficiency on your part and your mental acuity, I understand. No, like in, in storytelling, you know, you need multiple subjects in the frame. 85 millimeters is great for isolating a single subject, but you know, you can't bring depth to it. You know, it's always just kind of- Of course I can. With the aperture, I can choose to have shallow we're depth not, of field, expansive depth of we're field. We're not talking I about depth of field. I can move back and forth to tell the story. No. I mean, I can tell stories about people. I can tell stories on the street. I can tell stories about landscapes. I can tell stories about wedding couples, about baby portraits, about fascinating subjects. Yeah, just a, a whole bunch of portrait examples is what you- I, I believe I I said the word landscape as well. Yeah, but you were wrong when you said that. Okay, objectively, because he is wrong, a 35 millimeters is the best focal length. For oh, you want the animal. I mean, 35 millimeters is the storyteller's focal length. You can bring in the environment into the image or the video that you're capturing. And there have been so many times where I'm going on a trip and I'll bring a camera with just a 35 millimeter lens because it can do so much. Or I've shot entire episodes of DP Review TV with just a 35 millimeter lens and I don't feel like I'm missing anything and there's so many examples of like really bright 35 millimeters or really compact 35 millimeters think about the number of compact cameras that have been released with a built-in 35 millimeter lens because it's so versatile how many compacts with an 85 millimeter have you seen I don't think anyone's ever made one because it makes no goddamn sense Chris somebody needs to call a coroner because this man is clearly brain dead that's not actually when you call coroners you usually wait until you talk that line and okay to pull the plug continue so I will agree with you on one thing because I'm a really civil person the 35 millimeter is an excellent lens for telling stories when those stories are the most boring uninteresting banal sorts of subject I'm, i can see in the exif data whenever we upload to a sample gallery on dpreview.com it says focal length and the majority of the photos that i've taken that i really like on there are 35 okay. millimeters and you know what i when can the story is about when and boring 
it's a zoom that covers the 35 millimeter range. I have seen plenty of examples where you've yes. taken beautiful photos of 35 millimeter. Yes, because so I'm a very professional camera reviewer and I do it under duress. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you can't tell the stories that an 85 millimeter can tell. If I need to get more of the story, I can just walk backwards with my legs and I can get that shot. But I could say so close to closer. Yes. Can you do undistorted portraits close up? No, they look terrible. Your lens is absolute garbage. You know what? I know we were doing the best lens focal length of all time, but let's put the worst focal length of all time, Jordan. Oh, yeah. I have an uh, objective. I'm going to go with 35 millimeter. What? Was, yes, it's absolutely the worst focal length of all time. I mean, anything a 35 millimeter can do, Jordan, a 28 millimeter can do better. It can tell even more of the story. That would easily be the better choice. Or the sturdy and trusty 50 millimeter. You can get those in the same kind of light gathering formulas. They're very versatile with their natural look on the world, and they're way more affordable. Well, it's funny you should mention 50 millimeters, Chris because I have run the numbers. Objectively, 50 millimeters is the worst focal. Oh, and you have run the numbers, really? Because if you ran the numbers, you would realize that every single camera and camera manufacturer released a camera in the 70s and 80s with a 50 millimeter lift. Yeah, and we've learned since then. Since then, it has been the nifty 50 that has been every photographer's choice after their kit lift. I once, the numbers show that it's a wonderful, a wonderful loved lens. I once went on a trip and made the mistake of bringing just a 50 millimeter lens with me, and I spent the entire time being like, Ah, uh, it's not wide enough to capture my scene. It's not long enough to really isolate a subject. Had, mushy middle ground. I had a lengthy phone conversation with that very 50 millimeter lens, and it told me that the mistake was actually bringing you along on that trip because you were such an unimaginative creator that you couldn't make a 50 millimeter lens for everything. And I'm tired of everybody saying it's such a natural perspective. I mean, to really approximate human vision, it's more like a 42 millimeter lens, which is also closer to 35 millimeters, which is the best focus. You know, let's cite Pentax, which we all know is the greatest camera manufacturer of all time. There she state that it's closer to 43 millimeters, which would then actually be closer to a 50 millimeter focal length, not a 35 mil. That's bananas. Oh, you're being ridiculous, Jordan. I mean, if we're going to talk about the second best focal length, it would probably be 50 millimeters, and the 28 wouldn't be far behind in third place. Oh, so now we get to do runner-up focal lengths? Fine, I'm expanding the scope of this video again. The best focal length is 35 millimeters. The second best is 135 millimeters object. Oh, Jordan, I mean, clearly a childish response to the fact that 135 millimeter has 35 millimeter in it. That's the no, only reason. That has nothing to do with it. I think it's a minor portrait focal length, then 85 millimeters. It's great for indoors. You're Four sick in the head. Really nice compressed landscapes with it. It is an undersung gem yeah, of a wonderful if you have a mile behind you to walk back. Objectively, the second best. Okay, well, then the third best spoke length is done. Okay. 28 mil. We're not going to keep doing this. You know what? This has been a fun discussion where we came to some real solid conclusions. So thank you for contributing to those, Chris. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Yeah, leave your comments below and let us know what you think your favorite folk length is. Again, clearly it will be the not favorite, objectively the best. Ah, which was, there's a reason 35 shooting cameras don't have 85 millimeter lenses on. That's because people are lazy. They just don't want anything. Okay, thank you guys so much for joining us. And we'll see you soon with another episode of Deep Review TV if we don't kill each other. This was fun.